uh, maybe uh, the, the question uh, uh, will be delivered in the Q&A session and I will move to uh, the third speaker. Um, Mbak Titi, apakah sedang, masih online? Halo? Ya, masih. Baik. Um, Mbak Titi, um, eh, mau mempresentasikan uh, PPT-nya sendiri ya? Ya, boleh. Bisa. Oke, okay. okay, um, I will uh, provide you uh, uh, 30 to uh, 40 minutes for presentation and um, you can use Indonesia and but it is preferable to use English. Uh, your time is yours up to 40 minutes ahead. Okay, um, thank you uh, Mas Muhammad for uh, allowing me to present my uh, paper. I think it's a short uh, presentation but because uh, I use I prefer to use English maybe it takes time <laughs> I will speak very slow um, uh, just to make sure that I can deliver it uh, well um, okay can you see the uh, presentation yes okay okay uh, thank you Mas Muhammad uh, good morning everyone uh, my name is Titi Anggraini. Uh, I'm advisory board member of Perludem. I would like to thank uh, UNEJ for Faculty of Law, University of Jember, for inviting me to be one of the speaker of this very uh, important uh, international seminars. Uh, Dr. Jayus, uh, Ibu uh, Dr. Rabia, uh, and all of UNEJ, uh, Faculty of Law, UNEJ uh, colleagues. Uh, please allow me to present my uh, paper on women in election amidst pandemic COVID-19. So my presentation will focus uh, especially on election during pandemic COVID-19 that now we are preparing in Indonesia and within four, uh, within four days, we will have uh, voting and counting days uh, uh, in uh, December 9. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, I would like to start by uh, em uh, emphasizing on uh, democracy as a concept of popular control and political equality. Based on the political scientist uh, opinion, there are so many definitions of uh, democracy, but I uh, will use definition from Global State of Democracy Framework that was released by International IDEA in 2019. So in 2019, International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance released a framework called GSOD, Global state of democracy. Um, idea uh, uh, put two big components on democracy. First, popular control and second, political equality. Uh, democracy not only about election, but there are uh, several uh, components and variables of democracy, including fundamental rights, checks on government, impartial administration, a representative government and participatory engagement. So we have to put democracy as a values, a system of values. Uh, uh, because it is a values, we need a legal system to enforce it. Um, in democracy, when we talk about um, uh, fundamental rights, we also uh, talk about access to justice and then civil liberties, social rights, and when we talk about impartial administration, we also talk about absence of corruptions and uh, predictable enforcement. And also uh, about the uh, variable participatory engagement, engagement, we have to make sure that civil society participation uh, also uh, part of our um, practice on democracy, electoral participation, direct democracy, and local democracy. So um, democracy have so many components and variables, not only election. We have to uh, keep in mind uh, about this. 
uh, and when we talk about representative government, clean election is the requirement of uh, the representative government. Not only uh, having uh, a regular election, but also clean election, and then inclusive suffrage, free political parties, and elected government. So I put this as a, a, a system of values that uh, need uh, a legal system to enforce it. And then, uh, but a democracy also uh, facing three insufficient progress in uh, three areas. Uh, first, uh, about the uh, still uh, the, the 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 country with uh, democratic system still facing high uh, corruption uh, uh, rate, and also the second one is about the judicial independence, and the third one uh, related to our topics is about the insufficient progress uh, in gender uh, equality. So the progress on gender equality is too slow. I refer to the data of international idea based on the international idea findings uh, it it needs uh, 46 years so it uh, it counted last year so if we uh, start this year it means 45 years um, uh, based on the international idea data uh, it takes 45 years uh, to reach gender parity in parliaments uh, in 2019, uh, there were 24 uh, percent female uh, or women representation in parliaments. We need more than that. When we talk about uh, Planet 5050, uh, it, it at least we we need 45 years to reach uh, Planet 5050 with gender parity in uh, parliament. So it's a long road to uh, gender parity. Uh, this is Indonesian situation uh, and condition uh, recently. Uh, when we talk about uh, democracy as a, a, po a popular control and a political equality uh, components with all its variables, uh, we found that only uh, several items with uh, green color. Green color, it means we have high performance. And yellow color, mid-range performance. And red color, it means low performance. Um, uh, mostly, uh, our indicator are uh, with uh, yellow uh, colors. Yeah, It means we are in mid-range performance of democracy. Uh, representative government, fundamental rights, checks on government, impartial administration, but we have one component uh, or one variable with a uh, green color, which is uh, participatory engagement, uh, including civil society participation, election participation, uh, that contribute to the green color of participatory engagement. Um, and, and also, this is the map of Indonesian position uh, among other countries uh, in the regions. Uh, Australia, uh, they have uh, all colors in uh, green for five uh, variables. Uh, India uh, with all yellow colors, Indonesia with only one green colors on participatory engagement, and all yellow colors for representative government, fundamental rights, check on government, and impartial administration. In Asia, we have Japan, one yellow color, and also South Korea uh, that held uh, their elections in April 15 uh, with all uh, green colors for uh, five uh, variables of democracy that released by international idea. Um, and also Indonesia, we are facing a um, um, uh, challenge on um, the, 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 what, that democracy is still not free from corruptions. Uh, you know that the impartial administration uh, required uh, absence of corruption. But this is the Indonesian position among other countries in Southeast Asia. So Indonesia is below the, uh, what is it, the rates yeah, uh, in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, we are in a red color and then this is the uh, uh, the rate in uh, Southeast Asia. So we are below the uh, standard in Southeast Asia uh, on absence of corruption. 
Um, and also about the gender equality, although we are uh, better than Malaysia, uh, referred to Dr. Rabia, but uh, compared to other uh, Southeast Asia average, we are still below the uh, Southeast Asia average. I will show you the latest data on our uh, uh, women representation in parliament. So this is a woman uh, elected in national parliament or a DPR, Dewan Perwakilan Rakyat. Although it increased uh, based on the 2019 election data, uh, for the first time in uh, election Indonesian history, uh, we reach uh, more than 20% women uh, representation in parliament. You can see that among 575 members of DPR last year in 2019 election, there were uh, 118 female candidates elected in our uh, national parliament or DPR. It's equal to 20.5% uh, women representation in parliament. But this is still uh, below 30% as a critical uh, numbers of uh, women representation in parliament. We need to do more effort to make sure that we achieve more than uh, these numbers. Um, uh, so you can see that, that there were progress, but we need more than this progress. Um, how about the uh, simultaneous local executive election that we will have uh, within four days or Pilkada, Pemilihan Kepala Daerah 2020. Um, I'll show you some data that uh, election for governor, mayors, and regions, also known as regional head elections or Pilkada, will take place on December 9, 2020, on Wednesday. Uh, voting will be at almost 300,000 polling station, 298,938 uh, polling station across uh, 309 regencies in 32 provinces will start at 7 a.m. and end at 1 p.m. local time and will be staffed by more than 2 million poll workers. So you can imagine that it's a very big election, although it's a local scale election, but the numbers uh, show us that it's a national scale election, one of the biggest election in the world in 2020. Um, uh, if we see the voters' numbers, uh, our uh, voters only below uh, uh, United States of America, uh, based on numbers here. Yeah. Um, this is the fourth regional head election since Indonesia began to gradually implement uh, concurrent or simultaneous regional election in 2015. And uh, 2020 regional head election will be the last wave of concurrent regional head election before a nationwide simultaneous regional head election uh, is conducted in November uh, 2024. So in November 2024, we will have a, national, a nationwide simultaneous regional head election. On election day, voters will elect nine governors uh, 37 mayors and 224 regions across 270 regional jurisdiction in Indonesia. There are um, 740 candidates pairs competing for these seats, including 25 in gubernatorial, 101 in mayoral, and uh, 614 in region race. A total of um, the total numbers of voters are. Uh, more than 100 million voters will cast their votes, inclu including um, 50 million men, 50 million, and 164,426 men, and uh, 50, mil 50 million, 194,726 women. So, uh, uh, women more than men for this uh, Pilkada 2020, or approximately 53% uh, of the national electorate are registered to vote, including uh, 3 million, more than 3 million first time voters. So you can imagine how big is our elections uh, compared to Malaysia and other country in Southeast Asia. 
So uh, the legal basis for the 2020 uh, Pilkada or local election is law number one year 2015 that already revised by three laws, law number eight, law number 10, and law number six. So you can refer to uh, this uh, four laws uh, to study about the legal framework of Pilkada 2020. And how about the candidate nomination for the 2020 Pilkada? To compete in regional head election, a candidate may run independently or under the nomination of political party or a coalition of parties. In general, all candidates must meet the following uh, criteria. You are Indonesian citizen, be at least 30 years old for gubernatorial race or 25 years old for mayoral and regency elections, be considered physically and mentally healthy based on a medical examination, not be currently in prison or for a, a crime, and be running for a first or second term for the position in question, as the law prohibits people from holding a third term for a position even if it is in a different constituency. A person running as independent candidate must demonstrate that she or he has the support of between 3% and 6.5% uh, of eligible voters in the constituency by providing copies of, oh, sorry, I did mistake, uh, this is not three, uh, but uh, yeah, sorry, I uh, made a wrong uh, okay, text, sorry. Um, yeah, must uh, uh, gain support between 6.5% uh, and 10% of eligible voters in the constituency by providing copies of the supporters' national electronic identi identification cards. Uh, and then for the parties or coalition can only nominate candidate if they hold at least 20% of the seats in the regional house of representative or if they receive at least 25% of valid votes in the previous regional legislative elections. Um, there are no restrictions limiting candidates with COVID-19 from running for election during the candidate registration period. For example, candidates must submit a COVID-19 test result. And following the close of uh, candidate registration on September 6, the Election Commission or KPU announced that 60 candidates have tested positive for COVID-19 during registration. A potential candidate who test positive for COVID-19 are requested to undergo necessary treatments. And the latest data shown us that at least uh, 70 candidates tested positive of uh, COVID-19, uh, including several uh, election organizers and also uh, polling workers uh, that uh, follow uh, rapid tests as a requirement to be uh, polling workers. Uh, and how about to be uh, a voter in uh, Pilkada 2020? This is, this is maybe information for uh, Dr. Rabia that according to law number 10, uh, year 2016 on regional head election, a person in eligible to vote is eligible to vote if he or she is Indonesian citizen at least 17 years old on election day, although resident uh, younger than 17 uh, years old, uh, she or he may vote if they uh, are or have been married. So we have an uh, exception uh, for uh, a citizen under 17 uh, that uh, has have been married uh, to cast their vote. Enroll in the voter registry, a citizen whose voting rights have not been revoked by a court, a resident of a region holding elections as verified by a national electronic identification or ID card, and not an active member of the military or police. In Indonesia, member of the military or police prohibited by uh, using their uh, votes. Leading up the election, the Ministry of Home Affairs or Kemendagri stated that approximately 2% of eligible Indonesian have not yet been recorded in the national ID system. Uh, but in 2020 regional head election, uh, there's a new requirement that voter must present 
their electronic ID cards or statement letters issued by the civil registry office at their registered polling station. So we have to keep in mind that uh, uh, um, uh, on the voting day, uh, we have to bring our uh, electronic ID or our KTP electronic and uh, present it uh, in front of the polling workers as a requirement uh, to use our, uh, to cast our votes. Um, women in Indonesian election uh, involving in three areas as a candidate and its team uh, in a political arena and second one as a election organizers and the third one as a voters. Uh, for example, now in election commission, national election commission, we have one female members of election uh, commission members. Uh, and one uh, female member in election supervisory body or Bawaslu. Uh, participation of women in uh, 2020 Pilkada, we have no quotas or other special provision for women and minority candidates. Access to campaign finance has been one of the greatest hardless for women and minorities running for office. And uh, the current regional head election law attempts to lower this access barrier by allowing some campaign activities to be funded directly through regional state budgets. These activities include television airtime for candidate debates, campaign advertisement, and the production of campaign materials. Uh, campaign spending caps, uh, which are covered below, are also implemented in an attempt to provide a more uh, equal playing field for women and minority candidates. However, the spending limits remain high. Um, now I will jump to the data of women uh, in uh, candidates in 2020 uh, Pilkada. Women, uh, before uh, I uh, show you the data of women involved in 2020 Pilkada, uh, the, this is the elected women elected uh, in local executive office in 2015, 2017, and 2018 Pilkada. It, in uh, total, uh, uh, 45 female candidates elected in 45 regions. It equal to 16.73%. Um, and in 2017, there are there were 15 female candidates elected in 101 regions. And in uh, last uh, 2018 election, we have 31 female candidates elected in 170 regions or equal to 18.24% um, uh, uh, female uh, candidates uh, elected in Pilkada. Uh, this is the data from uh, last election. And how about uh, 2020 uh, Pilkada? Uh, in 2020 Pilkada, we have 10.81% women candidates among 1,480 candidates. Uh, the details are, uh, for the female regional head candidates, we have uh, 87 uh, candidates. Um, and then... Uh, 600 and, uh, uh, 653 uh, male candidates. Uh, and for a female regional vice head candidates, we have uh, 73 uh, candidates or equal to 9.86%. Uh, uh, so you can see that the numbers is very low compared to the male uh, candidates. Um, this is the detail of the woman in 2020 Pilkada. Uh, for the governor, we have two candidates. Uh, deputy governor, we have three candidates. For uh, mayor and region, we have uh, 85 candidates. Uh, and for deputy mayor and region, we have 70 female candidates. Uh, so you can see that uh, it is still uh, small numbers compared to the total numbers of candidates. How about the uh, independent candidates? Uh, uh, Fortunately, there are a uh, woman running uh, through independent uh, candidates track. Uh, there are three uh, regions with a uh, head uh, of region uh, candidates that running from the independent track, uh, including Jember, 
uh, tanah bumbu seram and seram bagian timur. Uh, Jember is very unique because the incumbent running not uh, through uh, uh, nomination of political parties but through independent uh, uh, nomination. And also for the vice head of region candidates, there are uh, five uh, regions with uh, five uh, female vice head of region candidates. Uh, Pohuwato, Sumeneb, Maluku Barat Daya, Fakfak, and Lamongan. And how about the political party support to women uh, candidates? You can see that uh, uh, Golkar is the political party with uh, the highest numbers of uh, female candidates here. And then uh, follow uh, uh, by uh, Gerindra, Nasdem, uh, PDIP, uh, PKB, uh, PKS, and PKB. Uh, you can uh, access the data. I will uh, share with you the presentation later on. And this is the educational background of the female candidates in uh, 2020 Pilkada. So you can see that mostly the female candidates with, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, postgraduate and uh, bachelor, bachelor degree and postgraduate degree, uh, S1, 33, and uh, master degree, uh, 32, and three of them uh, hold a doctoral uh, degree. And uh, how about the age? So uh, age of the female candidates uh, for the head of region mostly in uh, uh, between 46 to 55, uh, followed by 36 to 45, uh, so uh, relatively young. And for the vice head of region candidates, female, uh, uh, mostly uh, similar to the head of region, female head of region candidates, uh, mostly uh, between age 46 to uh, 55. And uh, this is the background of head of region candidates. Uh, you can see that mostly from the private background or swasta, uh, mostly uh, they are a business women uh, or uh, incumbent uh, or a civil servant uh, and also a member of local parliament. Uh, almost similar with uh, the vice head candidates, mostly uh, from the far, uh, private sector or business woman, a woman, um, member of parliament, uh, civil servant, and um, uh, lecturer, only one lecturer uh, interested to be uh, candidates. And how about, this is the, my last present, uh, 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 part of my presentation. The, I noticed that uh, there are three challenges of uh, women, rep uh, women uh, participation in 2020 Pilkada. First, we are During the pandemic, women, uh, our children that uh, school from home and also um, uh, facing the economic uh, uh, challenge, it creates uh, not only double burden, but also multiple burden. There are also like um, stigma from the uh, public that uh, male uh, leaders uh, more favorable compared to uh, female leaders. And second one, the challenge of uh, women participation in 2020 Pilkada is unhealthy competition as uh, already elaborated by Dr. Jayus, uh, vote buying, intimidation, intervention from the close family relatives and mem family uh, members. Uh, make in the, uh, um, women voters cannot vote independently. And the last one is uh, limited access to information. You know that because of uh, the pandemic situation, we cannot access the information uh, as uh, uh, free as uh, before. Yeah, there are so many restrictions to uh, meet uh, other people, to uh, gather with other um, 
what is it uh, uh, voters so uh, this creates uh, this is uh, creates a, a big challenge on how we access information as as a basis uh, to make uh, our votes. I think I will stop there and then uh, looking forward to your uh, uh, inputs and critics. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Miss City, for presentation. And also, um, thank you for all the speakers, Dr. Jayus, Dr. Mabia, and Mbak Titi for uh, great presentations. And uh, since your presentations are so uh, uh, knowledgeable that uh, so many questions that uh, has been sent to me and uh, but I cannot present all the questions uh, because uh, there are too many questions so I select three questions first and then I think it will be uh, uh, three session, two or three session of Q&A. And uh, in the first session of Q&A, I have selected three questions and I will show you. Yeah. Um, uh, the first question from Afina. Um, Afina, it is undeniable that women's political participation becomes a fundamental prerequisite for gender equality and democracy. It facilitates women's direct engagement in public decision making and ensures better accountability to women. But how can we enhance understanding, contribution of and benefit for rural communities, in particular women, on gender mainstreaming the nation building process as a method to further promote the process of transformative leadership and citizens. And uh, a second question from Ar India: gender equality in Malaysia is still a basic problem because it is still difficult for women to hold political position in Malaysia. Have women in Malaysia ever held strategic positions or top leaders' positions? And the third question from Fiko. How do Islam, women, and politics link to participation in Malaysia's elections? Because in the PAS article, as I read, it is much more difficult for women to get into politics. I think discrimination remains visible. For example, women will never be nominated as candidates in the meeting. Uh, uh, women and men were also separated. And how is the development of past in general? Does it still contain traditional value or it has developed? I think uh, because uh, uh, the presentation was presented by first and second speaker first, I think uh, the question for the speaker will uh, be delivered later. And also the, the, there was uh, one of the two question to first speaker, but I will show it uh, later in the uh, subsequent session. I think uh, among three uh, questions uh, are delivered to um, Dr. Rabia. <laughs> also, uh, the other uh, uh, speakers can uh, uh, answer uh, these questions. Um, I think uh, Dr. Rabia can respond to these questions. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, I will tackle the first, the last two questions first. And then I think the first question was more uh, broad and general and can be discussed with, uh, can be further uh, elaborated by other uh, panelists as well. So uh, Vico Tan asked about uh, PAS. And um, yes, uh, PAS, which is the Islamist Party Malaysia, or in, in Malay, it's called Parti Islam Malaysia. Uh, it is one of the most conservative party in the in 1999. For example, I will go back a bit in the history. Um, in 1999 up until 2013, it still uh, shows much more progress, and they have been uh, they have. Uh, they had actually in the past fielded more female candidates and they have been more open about um, including women as part of their political machineries. However, I think um, the, the leadership, I think uh, with PAS is about leadership position. Uh, the current leader, 
Hadi Awang is much more of a conservative figure and therefore it reinforces back the traditional and conservative values in PAS. And one of the good thing about PAS or the bad thing I am not sure is that the grassroots members are very much in tune with whatever is being instructed by the top leadership. And I think because the current leadership very much emphasizes much more on traditional values and therefore you see that PAS has reverted back to its traditional stance on women and that is why we can see that PAS does have one or uh, does nominate women but they do not nominate as many women as other political coalitions and in fact one of the longest uh, member of parliament Siti Zaila from Rantau Panjang Kelantan is actually a past candidate, but even she had, um, in, uh, she had forwarded in her in our interview with her that the support system that she received is not mainly from the political party itself, but from her family members. So, in my opinion, past has actually had in the past has become much more progressive in terms of its uh, views on women in politics. But in recent years, uh, because of the top leadership, and it has reverted back to much more traditional and conservative stance. Um, and I do not see it change um, because what I see now is past is uh, can be seen as a much more uh, how to say this, uh, Massachusetts uh, political parties in terms of women and there have been many instances where uh, its political leaders have actually got involved in issues related to women and therefore um, and, and it had not uh, you know they had justified it using religion so I think in that sense it has reverted back <laughs> and, and it has not progressed since then. Uh, Arindia asked about women uh, strategic positions or top leadership positions. Women had, uh, for example, in Mahathir Muhammad's time, even we had women ministers, but the numbers are not enough. For example, in the time of Mahathir Muhammad, uh, we had uh, Rafida Aziz as one of the Iron Lady who helmed the Ministry of Trade, which is seen as a tough portfolio instead of uh, if we give women uh, to, to go for uh, women a ministry or whatsoever, it is seen as a soft portfolio. But we had women helmed the tough portfolios as well or the hard portfolio such as Ministry of Trade. But as you can see now, um, and, and we had one Aziza in the 2018 uh, cabinet to be the, our first female deputy prime minister. So we had that, but it seems that now women were not still not given enough opportunities to actually shine through because of their talents. And this is only because of the existence of strong patronage system. And women had not had break the glass ceiling in the political institution yet, political parties. So it is, um, it is a problem, right? And, and we had women had strategic positions, but it is not enough, right? They had not uh, have the time to actually break through um, uh, the glass ceiling to give opportunities for other women. And even during the Arisa Nationals time, uh, previously also we had, uh, for example, we had long-term uh, ministry Minister of Women, uh, Shahrizat Jalil, for example. But even then, she did not manage to actually break the glass ceiling and to give more opportunities for the younger women, right? Uh, there have been uh, issues about women in the Wanita Amno and women in Putri Amno also. Uh, so there is also a generational conflict among uh, women wings in the political parties. And that is one reason why I say women wings should be abolished and it should, women should be, be going straight into the mainstream politics. Um, and in the, the, the first question is asking about society um, uh, and also their uh, reception towards women as political leaders. Um, in Malaysia, in the interviews that I had with uh, politicians, they had, initiate, uh, they had uh, mentioned that the main issue with political participation is actually not the society because their constituency actually responded well to them when they go down on the ground and meet the people. They are very much uh, perceptive towards female politicians. But the main 
problem is the political parties won't give them the opportunities and the chances for them to actually be given chance to be candidates, to be fielded as candidates, chance to be the leader of the branch of the political parties branch. So I think in terms of society, they are much more open, but to break the old boys network club in political parties is much more difficult than that. Uh, thank you very much, I think. Okay, that's all. Yes, that's it for me. Okay. Maybe can give chance to other 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 panelists as well. Yeah, I, I think uh, um, Mbak Titi may uh, want to answer or provide a feedback regarding these questions. Yeah, um, I think related to the first question, yeah, about the women in uh, rural uh, communities. Actually, in Indonesia, we have a very strategic and uh, big modality. We have uh, Nahdlatul Ulama uh, uh, with all its organs, and also Muhammadiyah with all its organ, Naishatul Aisyah, Aisyah, Muslimat NU, Fatayat, uh, and so on and so on. And also, we have PGI, Persekutuan Gereja Indonesia. Uh, KWI konferensi wali uh, gereja Indonesia ya, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so um, by uh, involving those uh, community mass organization, I think it's a strategic approach ya, because they uh, work very concrete uh, in the field and they have so many uh, what is it uh, women empowerment program. So as a, a basis uh, to uh, empower women uh, by working with the mass organization uh, like Muhammadiyah, NU, KWI, PGI, and others, uh, it's one of the uh, strategic approach uh, we can use to empower uh, women at the grassroots level. And also to strengthen uh, women uh, representation in politics, I think, uh, we cannot avoid the fact that uh, regulation playing important role. Uh, how our legal framework um, create more, uh, what is it, uh, uh, good environment for women to involve in politics. Luckily, in Indonesia, we have a quota for uh, candidate nomination for uh, legislative election that uh, candidate list must be uh, fulfilled with minimum 30% of female candidates. Uh, but um, you know that that's for the candidates nomination only for legislative election. We don't have affirmative action for uh, presidential election and also uh, uh, executive local election in Pilkada. So when women appointed as candidate or selected as candidate, it's 100% based on their uh, modality, social modality. Uh, they are part of the uh, political party structure, uh, have a strong relation with elites, or they have a social uh, basis because they are part of the Fatayat NU or Muslimat RU leadership or Naishatul Aisha and uh, Aisha uh, and so on and so on. So there's no like um, affirmative action to have more women uh, in uh, competition. I think for uh, the next, we have to revise our local election law, our Pilkada law, and also our election law to have more uh, provision uh, regarding uh, uh, affirmative action for the candidates nomination for presidential and Pilkada election. Uh, and also for the legislative election, Mas Muhammad, I think we have to uh, provide more provision on um, affirmative action for a, a legislative candidate nomination. Not enough by having only 30% of candidates on the list. Uh, I think we have to have, uh, apa? Uh, to have 30% of candidates put on number one on the list. Why a female candidate must be put it on number one on the list? Because more than 64% of elected candidates are candidate in number one position. We are different with Malaysia with its first past the post system. In Indonesia, we have proportional open list system that in one electorate, we have more than 
uh, three seats to be contested by candidates. So we have more opportunity actually for female candidates to be elected. But some uh, mostly candidates put not on the top list, but on the five <laughs> number six. Um, uh, the, the fact is that uh, the voters uh, prefer to vote candidates uh, uh, on number one or number two. So that's, I think, important to have on number one uh, uh, electorate. Uh, that's uh, one of my recommendations for a better law. Um, yeah. Uh, and also one more, uh, Mas Muhammad, sorry, um, women on political structure. Uh, maybe as you know that mostly women put not in a strategic position. A uh, very small numbers of women uh, become decision makers in political party structures. I think that's also one of the reform we can push to the parliament to have a minimum 30% of women in uh, what is it, uh, elite structure of the political parties. Uh, thank you, Mas.